Let's talk about anxiety. Welcome to Black Swan Revelations. My name is Shane. I'm your host. And today we're going to be talking about how do you overcome anxiety? You know, we've been talking for the past few weeks about a rapture, um, rapture imminent, talking about different festivals in Israel. And what does that mean for us? What about our loved ones? All this kind of stuff. So hopefully I can address some of that. Uh, so sit back, <laughs> enjoy a cup of coffee. I've had a few already this morning. And uh, probably after this, I'll, I'll go have another, another coffee as I uh, make my way through the day when I'm working. Also, my sister's coming to town to visit tonight so that should be fantastic we're having a birthday party at my son-in-law and daughter's place my daughter's birthday so we're going to be hanging out that should be pretty fun looking forward to that a little bit tired today not gonna lie in my last video I shared that I actually uh, slept out in the deck for a little bit last night with my wife and uh, at least it wasn't in the garage by myself where been known from time to time that I have to sleep in the garage or the doghouse so it's it was actually wonderful and I'm just kidding if my wife is watching I love you honey um, but yeah it was it was fun watching the stars and everything but I couldn't sleep uh, there was some guy next door I don't know if he was hacking up bodies or whatever it sounded like he was hacking up bodies next door to us you know with a machete or something and uh and then you might ask the question, well, how would you know what it sounds like? Okay, I don't know what it sounds like, but I'm like, who's up late at night? Like at 10 o'clock, I mean, two o'clock in the morning, one o'clock in the morning, making noise, like it was weird. So I didn't know what he was up to. It sounded shady to me. Most people are asleep. Anyways, crazy. How can you tell I've had too much coffee today? So how do we overcome anxiety? You know, especially with talk of rapture imminent and all this kind of stuff. There's, there's a couple of things. One is, when you become a Christian, a lot of your needs are taken care of already in Christ. Because really, at the end of the day, no matter what happens to you, suffering, whatever it is, you are still with Jesus Christ and whatever happens in this life is just a blink of an eye like honestly it's just a blink of an eye when you think about eternity it's it's nothing you know and you think about oh man i stubbed my toe or i have bills to pay debt all this kind of stuff in eternity nothing here yeah it, it means a little bit more you know and we start thinking about our relatives and all this kind of stuff and we start thinking are they saved are they not saved and all this kind of stuff and what I do to relieve myself of that anxiety of me having to save the whole world by myself because believe it or not I am not Jesus Christ I am not the Holy Spirit so how about we do this how about we let the Holy Spirit be the Holy Spirit and take care of all those things that we cannot control. Do you know what we can control? We can control ourselves. We can control our thoughts. We can control our behaviors. We can control how we treat each other. And as a Christian, we should treat everyone else, no matter who they are, no matter what they believe, better than ourselves, better than ourselves. That is one step to curing anxiety, is put other people above you. Put your life on the line for someone else. Vouch for someone else. Give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm telling you, your anxiety will begin to pour away. It will begin to drip off of you. Another, another thing. Study the Bible, man. I keep saying it. You want to relieve yourself of anxiety. 
dive into the Word of God. This has helped me immensely, immensely studying the Scripture, studying it day, night, morning, afternoon, evening. I don't memorize Scripture. I should, but I don't. I just read a lot. I read a lot of the Bible, a ton. And what I find that is happening is my mind is being washed. Some people might call that brainwashed, but I'm okay. If the Holy Spirit wants to wash my brain, I am okay with that. Believe me, I'm okay with that. What I find is fascinating is the more you read the Bible, and I am a big King James advocate. Uh, I was just sharing in the last video that I looked up how many words are in the book of Hebrews, and there was like, I don't know, I forget the number now, like 4,953 words in, in the King James Bible for the book of Hebrews. And coincidentally, there was the same amount of words in Greek. I find that fascinating. I find all that stuff fascinating when you can study and learn things. And I believe God is a mathematician. I believe he has order. I believe he knows exactly when he's going to come back. I know when he's going to judge the earth. I know, I should say, I know he knows when he's going to judge the earth. And I'm not, I'm not stressed out about it because I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. That also relieves a lot of stress. Why? It's not escapism. It's just knowing that you have a future, a purpose, a vocation. So what is that vocation? Right now, today, it is to edify other believers in the church. To give them hope. To give them teaching, training, all this kind of stuff on how to love each other. Especially those that are in the church. Especially believers. You have to be able to edify each other if you are not able to do this i would have to check your sources where are you plugged into the most if you are plugged into cnn every single day your stress level is going to go through the roof it is i don't have to watch the news to tell that people are stressed out why why are they stressed it's because they can't control it they can't control the news outlets. And if you don't understand how the media outlets work, for example, you guys are probably seeing ads right now on my YouTube channel. Yes, I am a partner. I just became a partner with YouTube um, a few weeks ago. So all, <clears throat> all my videos are monetized, which means you make a little bit of a sliver of income uh, because of the ads that are running in front of your videos in the middle and after like 10 15 seconds some people have given me slack and said well there's some questionable ads coming up on my youtube channel shane i don't like that i'm like well dude the only reason why you're having questionable ads show up on your channel is because you watch questionable videos that's why YouTube knows exactly what videos you like. YouTube knows how long you watch these videos. YouTube knows when you watch these videos. Why do you think I get iguana videos attacking deer every once in a while or pro wrestling videos sent to me every once in a while? I'm like, ooh, there's another video of The Rock. Hmm, I like that. Oh, there's another video of Hulk Hogan. It's because I grew up on pro wrestling as a kid. So every once in a while I see something something that is reminiscent of that and you're going to get feeds based on what you watch. Now I also get feeds from other YouTube channels. One of my um one of my fellow YouTubers, Tom Cote, who is Watchman River. He has a video out. He basically puts a video out every single day. That guy is a machine if you haven't checked them out go check out the watchman river i always want to call them the rivermen watch i think that's also a cool name so if you want to start your own youtube channel as a christian man that's a good time to do it because there's a lot of people interested in the bible there's a lot of people interested in the end times you can call yourself 
the Riverman watch. There, it just helped you out. There's the name of the channel. Takes a little bit of while to get to a point where you needed, like originally, I think it was last year, you needed about 4,000 watch time hours to um, monetize your channel. You needed people to watch 4,000 hours of your stuff and you needed about 1,000 subscribers. Well, it took me about a year, almost a year, three, four months to get to 1,000 subscribers. And I remember when it was hovering around 900, 910, 920, 990, and then it would go down to 987 because I would say something silly and I'd lose a couple of subscribers. And then I'd say something, all of a sudden you get about 10 more subscribers and you're like, oh, good, I made it to 1,000 subscribers. That's kind of cool. Next day, it's like at 997, 998 or whatever. So now uh, the channel seems like I'm getting about 10 or 20 subs a day now, which is which is kind of cool. And really in the last month, I've had about 4,000 hours of watch time just, just recently, like in the last month. So I know there is an interest in people wanting to know what's going on specifically in the Bible. Again, I don't watch the news, so if you're coming here to get a little bit of a news update as to what's going on in the world with regards to fires, uh, did Joe Biden stumble again? Is Trump coming back as the president? Did, did my prime minister, um, I was going to say um, Pierre, <laughs> but that's his dad. Um, what's his name? Justin Trudeau. See, that's that's how little I watch the news. Um, it's the same thing. It's the same cycle over and over and over again. So I don't I don't watch it. I can catch up in five seconds. Somebody will be like, hey, did you know that there's fires everywhere in the world? Yeah, okay. What, what would you like me to do about it? Well, we should pray more about it, okay? Are you going to pray about it? Or are you just going to complain about it? Probably just going to complain about it. Just like you complain about the politicians. You're not going to pray for them, but you're going to you're going to pray at them. You're going to be like, "Lord, I bind I bind the devil, I bind these demons, I bind every every demonic spirit on the face of the planet in this universe. I handcuff them and they are gone." We do that. We 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 pray stuff that is just I don't know. I'm trying not to make fun of those people. But I remember when I lived in the United States, the, uh, I cheer for the Blue Jays, and I just had, I just experienced a loss personally, because our Blue Jays lost to the Minnesota Twins, and the 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 teacher, who was going to college in Minnesota, said, "Lord, I just, uh, guys, I just want to pray to the Lord. Can we just bow our heads in prayer?" I'm like, "Okay." Yeah, I suppose before we get studying, we should pray. Bowed my head and he's like, Dear Lord, I just thank you for the Minnesota Twins defeating the Blue Jays. Thank you for that. Thank you. And I open up one eye. I'm like, what? 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 So that's why I don't pray at people. We're supposed to be praying against the spiritual powers, the principalities, the powers, the rulers of the air. That is our battle right now. If you don't realize that, you're going to be influenced by CNN. You're going to be influenced by Fox News and what everybody else says. Five at five, six at six, seven at seven, all this kind of stuff. You're going to get stressed out beyond means. So instead, the more you study God's word, the more you study scripture, the less you ask him for things and this is hard to get people to wrap their heads around the more you study his word the more you get to know him talking about god the father god the son and god the holy spirit the trinity if you will the more you study the word the less you ask for things why because you are full you are 100% full. Everything we need to know about how to walk as a Christian are in the Bible. It's in the, the 13 Pauline epistles, 14 if you count Hebrews. They're all there. Everything we need to know about Christianity. 
if you go to Proverbs, you're not going to learn how to be a Christian. If you go to Genesis or Chronicles, you're not going to learn how to be a Christian. Even if you go to the book of Acts, you're not going to learn how to become a Christian. If you go to the Gospels or the book of Revelation, you're not going to know exactly how to be a Christian. And you're going to get anxious because you're going to start mixing up things going. Matthew 24 says, you know, as soon as the as soon as uh, the moon gets dark and the stars start to fall and the sun gets dark, that that means that's the rapture. And that means the, the Lord is coming for us. That's not the rapture. That's Jacob's trouble. After Jacob's trouble, then the Lord and his host come and touch down unto Mount Zion. Then the battle of Armageddon. Then the Millennium Kingdom. Then the devil gets tossed into uh, a, a, a pit for like a thousand years until he gets released. And then he tries to sway everyone one more time. One more kick at the can, and then he gets tossed into the lake of fire with the false prophet, with the Antichrist, and anyone that's name is not found in the book of life. The Lamb's book of life, if you will. So if you're looking into one book on this is what I need to, to get saved, you're going to be a little bit confused. So to stop the confusion... Go to Romans, read all the way to Philemon, and that is everything that you need to know about how to be a Christian. Now, you can study other parts of the Bible. You can study Revelation. I read that book a lot. You can study the Old Testament, but we don't do exactly what they do in the Old Testament. If you do, you're going to set yourself up for a fall. You do not make vows and then no matter what happens, you go and kill your daughter. You don't do that kind of stuff. We don't make vows and then the next person that comes out the door, we're going to slug them. We're not doing that kind of stuff. Stay away from all that. You're entering into a curse if you try and follow all the commandments of God that was designed for Israel. That's not a hand signal jeepers so many people are like hey you're using hand signals and all this stuff i'm not i just talk with my hands <laughs> it's crazy how people are on youtube but where was i going this don't know don't know where i was going lost my thought anyways so yeah don't don't go to certain books of the bible and go how can i apply this to my life today david just took a chalk line and he lined up a whole bunch of people some people to die some people to become tributaries don't 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 apply that to your life like you need to line up jobs and i'm going to apply this job not that job and all this kind of stuff that's not what we do we don't do that we got to get above this thinking of does god love me Am I doing the right thing today? Did I mess up today? Is he going to stamp me out with his thumb? We got to get past that stuff. We got to get out of drinking milk every day. Because eventually you're going to drink so much milk. That it's going to pour through your nose. And you're not going to be any good to anyone. You might as well just eat pablum. Same thing. Eventually you got to get to the point. Where you're going to be eating steak every single day you're going to be eating lobster every single day and it's going to be delicious we got to get you off the pablum got to get you off the formula where you're like i don't know i don't know if the lord loves me am i worth it am i worth it i don't know i don't know if i'm worth it am i worth it oh i feel like such a bad person and i get it i get it i understand that we those thoughts creep in but again, like I said at the very beginning, if you want to get rid of that stuff, you got to study the scripture. You got to know who you are in Christ. We are joint heirs of Christ. Do you have any concept of what that means? That means we are seated in heavenly places. We have a seat at the table, if you will. We are secure by the Holy Spirit, we have 
God, the Holy Spirit living inside of us. Do you have any idea of how powerful you are? Do you understand that? The demons flee from you, not because of you, but because of who is inside of you. Come on, man. Tough love, isn't it? It's tough love. But this is why I don't watch the news. It's not that I don't care about people. I do care about people. I care about the, the sphere of influence, the people that are around me, people that I work with, the people that I go to church with, my family, my kids, my dog. I care about my dog. So I care about the things that I can actually control and I can control my mind. I can control my thoughts. If there's a thought that comes into my mind that does not line up with scripture, I give it to the Lord and I say, is this yours? Nope, okay, toss it. Toss it like a little slider right across the plate. Boom, gone. The only way that you can control your thoughts on a daily basis starting today is by diving into scripture. You have to read nonstop to your eyes bleed in order to saturate your mind with his word. I know this because I came out of a place where I suffered immensely. I could not control my thoughts. Severe ADD. Watching everything questionable. It's not good. It's not good. The only way to get out of that is to drown yourself in God's word. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do that for a couple of years. And if it still doesn't work, do it some more. Do it till you can't breathe. Then, then a whole new world will open up to you. I promise you. Last year when my wife prayed for me, she said, I pray my husband would get a hunger for his word because I was not reading the word of God. I had the New Living Translation. I hardly read it five minutes a day and I'd fall asleep. I'd try and read it for 10 minutes, fall asleep. And I couldn't be bothered reading his word. Then she did that simple prayer, didn't tell me. She should have told me, didn't tell me. And uh, I started reading it. I'm not going to go into the whole story, but I read the book of Romans every day for 30 days and a light switch flipped on. Bam, I was hooked. I was addicted to God's word. Now, I wake up, hymns pop into my head when I wake up. I don't listen to hymns once in a blue moon. But it's only because I wake up and I have a hymn in my head and I look it up on YouTube and I play the hymn. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, all this. Like, I love hymns. So, the reason why I say all this stuff is this will help you knock that anxiety out of the park. Don't watch news. Don't catch up on all the news. Don't catch up on all the news feeds. If you want to know if you're watching too much news, watch your YouTube channel and see what commercials you get. If it's all about investment, if it's all about fires, whatever it is, that's usually what you're watching quite a bit of. If it's professional wrestling tossed in here and there, hey, what can I say? <laughs> but the point, again, is you got to reduce that anxiety. Stop watching the news. I'm not saying stop watching YouTube, because then you'd stop watching my channel. Uh, but watch guys like Tom Cote. Watch Jordan Peterson. Watch all these other guys that actually give you hope as well. And they can explain things really, really well. Sometimes I have a hard time articulating myself. And I don't want to ever come across hard on people, but we beat ourselves up far too much far too much so how about understanding that Jesus Christ died for us on the cross it's nothing that it's it's nothing that we did to save ourselves we didn't do anything to save ourselves we can't I should say we can't do anything to save ourselves we caused him to go to the cross 
but there's nothing you and I can do to separate us from the love of God. There's nothing you can say or do to separate you from the love of God. If you can't hear this, if you can't hear my voice speaking to you, saying there's nothing that could separate you from the love of God. Angels, principalities, powers, pestilences in divers places, earthquakes, fires, CNN, nothing can separate you from the love of God. So I hope you got something out of this video. Hope that helps you reduce the anxiety. And uh, I'm telling you, we got more things to talk about on this channel especially when it comes to heavenly things and i want to go deep with you guys but if you're still questioning if you're saved if you're still wondering if god loves you you can't go deep can't go deeper because we're still drinking milk and cookies you got to get out of that milk and cookies what are what is the stage of milk and cookies is when you're you're taking someone's toy away from them and you're like I don't like what you said to me. And then you take the toy. I'm not playing with you anymore. I'm I'm unsubscribing to your channel. Because you said something that is offensive to me. And then they're back the next day subscribing. And then they go. And they go back. Can we grow up a little bit? Can we just grow up and just say. Hey it's okay for people to have an opinion. I subscribe to a ton of channels that I don't agree with. But I support them because I support the freedom of speech. You have to be able to talk through things. You got to be able to wrestle through your salvation. You can't just be reliant on one person telling you everything. You can't. You rely on the word of God. That will get you through everything. Everything. That was a lot, wasn't it? That was a lot in this video. So, again, I encourage you, go watch uh, the Watchman River first. Then come watch my channel. And then have a look. And hopefully, maybe together, the two channels will help you out. Because Tom likes to talk a lot about the news and stuff. And I can't tell him to not watch the news. But he has a nice way of wrapping it into um, his story of if he's talking about the rapture coming, not coming, all this kind of stuff. He can do that with news outlets. I cannot. I cannot do that. All I do is talk about the scripture. And yes, I do believe the rapture is imminent because the Lord has the power and the authority to grab us whenever he feels like it. There's nothing I can say or do to stop it or hinder it. Nothing. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. If you got something out of this, let me know in the comments. Feel free to subscribe. Even if you're a hater, still love you. I appreciate your feedback on the channel. Even if you don't like what I'm saying, what I'm putting out, I still appreciate your feedback and I appreciate that you are watching my channel. Whether or not you like me, that doesn't matter. Whether or not you like what I say, whatever, I just appreciate it. Anyways, my sister's calling me. See you later. Bye.